Indianapolis Motor Speedway fans, Doug Bowles here with you for another episode of Behind the Bricks. And I am super excited about this one because when you come to the Speedway, you want to know what's going on. You want to be entertained. And the best way we get those sounds to you, not just the cars, is through our public address system. So right now, we're going to see where that starts and how come you get to hear all the things you need to know about on track and the entertainment when you're here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So I've snuck into one of the rooms of the facility that a lot of people don't know is even here, but it's where everything you hear starts and is controlled. Right over here, I've got Will Curry. Will Curry is in charge of all the AV here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, has been doing that for several years for us, but knows not just AV, but knows an awful lot about the history of how it started here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So we are sort of in the secret compound. We are. Temperature controlled. I mean, you got to really pay attention to that throughout the year. Yep. But this is, you're here all year long. All year long. Uh, so it's a 365 day a year operation here to be ready for fans in these grandstands. Uh, really primarily one day a year, but um, you know, every every single day for us is just as important as any 500 race day. We're going to talk a little bit later about your music selection, but one of the things yep. I love is just music all year when yep. you're working on our sound system because it's awfully big around here. You know, one of the fun things, you know, our history and tradition is what makes us important. But as we're in here, you were talking to me a little bit earlier about this little concrete area yeah. dates back to the very beginning of the first telephone room here, sometime probably in the 20s. It is. Um, so this room was expanded, as far as we can tell, shortly after about 1925. So what you see here is a difference in concrete texture and color. Um, the original room is obviously this much smaller footprint. It did all the original telephones around the facility, distributing uh, low voltage cabling. Uh, certainly much less technology than we currently have today, of course, but uh, at the time it was all groundbreaking stuff that really nowhere else in the world had developed and used. So what we've got over here, got the old telephones here too, which is pretty awesome. And they all still function. Uh, everything functions. Uh, yeah, our, our telecom department here does an unbelievable job maintaining systems that have been here for, uh, as far as we can estimate, well over 70 years. Um, we still use these systems today. So, so this is your analog telephone system. Analog right telephones, analog audio. These systems are all tied to a uh, telephone on a desk. So in addition, we've trans we've gone from this old speaker yes. to that one. You think this is sometime 50s? This is this would have been one of the original horns ever installed to this facility. One of the very first loudspeakers. Um, as far as we can tell, roughly 1950 would have been the first modern era PA system where you would have seen these horns lining the front stretch. Yep. These horns were on that wall firing across the track up to the Tower Coast Grandstand. So we are in the phone room, the PA room. This is where it was in the 1920s and it's where it is today in the 2020s. We're going to go outside now and check out a lot of the work that Will does throughout the year to make sure that your PA system, your PA speaker, works when you're in your grandstand seat here at the Speedway. So in addition to where we're sitting, the Gate 1 Plaza, as people come in, it's gonna, they're going to hear things a lot differently. Some of our infield that didn't have some, like the spectator mounds, will now have some PA that they haven't had in the past, so I know you've worked pretty hard. But when you're out doing that, and you're sitting right here, do you have to run back to the to that uh, old phone room we just talked about to yeah. adjust the sound, or how do you do that? So, uh, you know, it wasn't that long ago where that was absolutely <laughs> the case, you know. Uh, to do something as simple as, I want to check one loudspeaker on the fence, that was a three-man job. Uh, and now, with the modern technology, I can essentially be anywhere in this facility, um, almost anywhere in the world connected to the internet, uh, and I can control and manipulate every sound system on this property via cell phone, laptop, iPad, anything I want to. Uh, now, most people don't have that privilege. That, that is certainly- I don't a, even have that privilege. <laughs> that is certainly a very particular <laughs> operation there. Um, so, so Brian important. Adams is playing Carb Day. Can you play some Brian Adams uh, for me right now? I can very easily play some Brian Adams. So you're doing right all now. this from your phone? I am. So currently I'm logged into iTunes. Um, the phone room that we just left, I'm essentially operating a device in that room uh, just remotely. So I can go into my iTunes. That's what we're using here today. I press play on music. I can open up, uh, it's called a DSP, this is our digital signal processing. Um, what's happening here, I can control every individual audio zone around the property. We have roughly 50 of those that I can independently decide how loud it is, what content's played there. So right now we're sitting in front of what we call our F1 fence. I can just very simply unmute our F1 fence, and we have audio. That's pretty cool. 
So that's why in the off season when I walk around and I hear music, it's your out testing. That's me. So I hear an awful lot from our fans about how great the music has been over the last few years. You want to know where that music comes from? It comes from this guy's <laughs> playlist. We spend a lot of time here. So, so it, obviously you said you played drums at, 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 in high school. Music is something you're passionate about. How do you choose the music? Just stuff you love? It, it is. It's stuff that I love, um, and I love input from the, the workers here in the facility. You know, I hear all the time, we're out working and there's no music on today. It, it, it's sort of a, it takes away from the morale, you know, we, as people have gotten so used to it. So I take suggestions for the playlist from, uh, you know, the painting crew, the IT crew, everyone out here working in the facility really has played a, a, a key role in developing the music that we put out for the fans and the employees. So there you have it, race fans, another behind the bricks. And this one is one that you notice every day when you're at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's connected to our history, as we saw down there from the early 20s. But it is what makes the modern Indianapolis 500 so much fun. You get to hear what's happening on track. You get to have a little bit of party music when you're sitting during those yellow flags. Or when you guys aren't even here and we're working around the facility, Will Curry <laughs> makes it sound good.